Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the inaugural, I'll say, experimental episode of News Shooting Self-Defense, or NSSD, featuring Paul Gordon and Dimitri. Just Dimitri? That's it. That's it. Like Madonna. You're just, <laughs> you're just... Dimitri. He's the he's the he's the one named uh, celebrity that's not a celebrity on uh, Gun Talk Radio. I'm the anti celebrity. He's the he's the he's the the Gun Talk Radio superhero that what never was. So well, let's talk a little bit before we get started here to give folks a little lowdown of uh, of what our show is going to be about. It's going to be a weekly show. It's going to be uh, audio. Although we'll, we're working on possibly making it video as well for this uh, issue. Episode. At the moment, we can't afford all the makeup to cover up the ugly. He, he's looking at himself because yeah. he ain't looking over at Gorgeous over here. The hotness <laughs> over here doesn't have no problem. Hotness don't need no makeup. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we, we spent all the money on the audio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this audio sucks. What we're going to do is we're going to talk, we're going to try to focus on how, how guns are being used to enable people to exercise their fundamental, I, I don't like using the word right, because a right, the way we use it now, it kind of implies it's like some sort of thing that's granted to you. It's, it's, it's our innate nature, our natural condition to want to defend ourselves it's who we are so when when an entity interferes with that 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 instinct for self-defense they're, they're basically violating natural law well you look like you were going to say something you were leaning into your microphone you had this like profound look like dude. it's a basic necessity really of life to be able to defend yourself exactly and in this day and age, there there are many ways that you can defend yourself, but I I think that you would agree with me and say that for the the common man who has a certain amount of income, as most of us do, which is not making millions of dollars, that a gun is by far the most effective platform to be able to defend yourself with, right? Correct. Unless you can afford, like you said, with lots of money, a crew that's going to be, you know... Yeah. Hovering around your you and your family, you know, or you can you can buy yourself a missile. I, I I actually belong. Oh, I can't remember the name of the group now. It's terrible. I belong to a Facebook group, and it's basically advocating for private ownership of nuclear weapons. Yes, you're with me on that, right? Mm, no. Yeah, you are. You know what? I don't mm, want to hear it. No, it's, no. it's a fundamental right to self defense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Well, you know, it's kind of like if you say, listen. If if you can afford to have a nuclear weapon, great. More power to you, literally. More yeah, but the people who can afford that are kind of whack jobs. Think about it. Really? Th think about who who can afford to own. Bill nuclear... Gates could afford to get a nuclear whack, missile. Whack a doodle who stole all his ideas from his friends. That's who you want. That's how. Aren't most rich people people that ripped off other people and exploited the poor and uh, don't deserve their wealth? I think that. Oh wait, no, I'm not a progressive. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, neither am I, but in certain circumstances, you got to call it for what it is. And the guy is shady. And I wouldn't trust him with a nuke because he is a hardcore. So you and lefty. I, we're, we're the right to bear nukes. It's called the bear nukes, B E A R, bear nukes. Uh, and if, it, look for it on Facebook. It's a private group, but if you request, I bet you. The dude that runs it is James Weeks. And you remember who James Weeks is? One of my personal heroes, James Weeks. Congratulations, you have a hero. Yeah, he's the dude that uh, totally brought he brought he brought male stripping back to politics. Wow, that's <laughs> yeah, that's so. When you think of libertarians, you think of male strippers. Well, you should and wackadoodles. Well, you should. It's, it's better to think of male strippers than Gary Johnson. <laughs> I'm serious. Or, or 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 Governor Bill Weld. Gary baked the damn cake and. Uh, Bill, uh, maybe the Second Amendment isn't all that uh, useful. Weld, yeah, I'd, I'd rather come on, James. Any day now, I'd rather have some James Weeks uh, doing some nude dancing than 
That would that that's far more indicative of the true libertarian spirit than freaking is this, Bill Wells. Is this what our show is going to be like? It's, it's not just really rambling no. on about no stuff. <laughs> you got me that... started. I didn't. You got no, yourself you, started. You actually got me started. Yeah. So, so the do... show so the show is basically about it's about guns and how guns are a a, a symbol a use and a tool for human beings to be able to provide for self-defense. So we're going to highlight stories that show how guns are used effectively, how guns are not used effectively, and how Mr. Government Man... I was going to say the political arena how enters Mr. into... How Mr. Government Man yeah. makes a little forays and uh, somehow has this uh, fundamental... I won't say lack of knowledge because I think they perfectly know exactly what they're doing. I'll say a lack of respect. So you want to get to the first story here? Let's just do this and get to the first story here. The first ever story. Let's do this. So this is Massachusetts Attorney General bans sale of all new assault weapons as of today. Today is... Wait, but he's banning all fully automatic weapons in Massachusetts? That's what you would think, but no, it's... uh... It's all semi-automatic sport rifles. Oh. So those would be like your ARs and your AKs and all the cool guns. The ones... That... Modern sporting right. arms. So, so this is from the Boston Globe. And I'll just read this section here. The Massachusetts assault weapons ban mirrors the federal ban Congress allowed to expire in 2004. It prohibits the sale of specific weapons like the cold AR-15, blah, blah. But gun manufacturers have taken upon themselves to define what a quote-unquote copy or quote-unquote duplicate weapon is. You know, for me, the uh, most exciting thing I could like listen to on like a podcast or something, there's somebody reading something that is it. like hot. That's dude. They, they, that's hot. This, this you were going to say that's hot. You looked at me and you were going to say that's hot. Snooze. You were going to refer to something that I was doing as hot. Dude, I'm falling. And you were looking at oh me. You're, and you're you reading. were seriously looking at me when you said it. Dude, that's, that's. I actually feel a little uncomfortable right now for you, for the, the, the millions of fans that are listening to you. Try to resist telling me I'm hot. Dude, I feel very first, awkward for you. Something happened in your childhood that really <laughs> messed you up, boy. Something, something happened in my childhood that made me awesome, and <laughs> that's why you're about ready to say that I'm hot, and you're oh, like, yeah. oh, I can't do that, man. I can't do that. I'm a married man. You are married? You're married, right? Oh, dude, again, you are straying from the subject. So Let's bad. talk about marriage. Are you trying to make this interesting so it's by interest- reading and yes. talking about... Well, well, we're 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 talking about these stories. That's kind of what okay, we do here. Thank you. Get back. We're actually going Focus. to read stories and then talk about them. Focus. So they market state compliant copycat versions of their assault weapons to Massachusetts buyers. So, what they're calling copies and duplicates, it's a semi-automatic rifle. It's not, as you said. An automatic rifle. What's really interesting now is, so so the attorney general is going to unilaterally decide this. There's no law that's well, been passed in Massachusetts. He's redefining what an assault rifle is. He's redefining what, what fully, you know, what a what a a fully automatic rifle is typically an assault rifle or a machine gun. And what he's doing is he's assigning that terminology to semi-autos that look similar. But don't have the same functionality whatsoever. Correct. He's not going to be... Uh, I mean, are the people is, in is Massachusetts... Is the SKS on this list, for instance? I bet you the SKS is not on this list. Oh, I bet you it is. You think so? Oh, without question. So they have two tests to determine what constitutes a copy or duplicate of a prohibited weapon. If a gun's operating system is essentially the same as that of a banned weapon. Okay, it's not essentially the same. It's radically different. Or if the gun has components that are interchangeable with those of a banned weapon. So so, so if you have a trigger on a double barrel shotgun and then you have a and trigger the, on there an assault you go. rifle. Dude, double barrels, it's got two barrels not like what do you need with two all you need is one two is redundant it's it's an assault shotgun right 
Now, this article is saying that, that the ag does have the authority to make this determination. It was litigated by the pro-gun group Gull some 12 years ago. Oh, my gosh, Dimitri, don't fall asleep on me. This is important information. Going by what I'm reading here, this new directive immediately bans the sale of all new <laughs> AR and AK style <laughs> rifles. He doesn't like facts and, and useful knowledge. <laughs> hey, we're going to want to talk about Bigfoot? You want to talk about Bigfoot? He's a Bigfoot fan. So. Do you know what this is in reference to? This is like Three Stooges. Like what's in reference to? Just, no. I don't know. <laughs> is this Curly or Mo or is it Curly? Which one is it? It is when they sleep. Should we talk about the Three Stooges pilot. now? Is this kind of one ring off the top? A little bit, a little bit. Yeah, they didn't have assault rifles ever in the Three Stooges, did they? I bet you they did. No, no, I don't. I don't know. I bet you they had some. Uh, mm. They had references to World War Two. I remember episodes with uh, Hitler, and although they think they called him Schittler. Oh my gosh! I can't believe you did this. I, I can't did. believe that you because went what down you're the path. Re- what you're reading is Snoozeville. This is this is important information. This is what we're talking about. How are we going to talk about this if the readers don't know what we're talking about? Maybe we need to reenact stuff. Oh, you want to reenact it? Hi, I'm the Attorney General of Massachusetts. They don't talk And like I'm that. going to redefine what an assault weapon is so I can ban you from getting a sporting rifle. And That's... they say, we're going to do this. I'm going to go down to dude, the end of the Dude, you're talking article. like some dude from Oklahoma, not Massachusetts. So. Whatever. It doesn't, no, no, it doesn't it matter. It does matter. Jerk. All you had to facts do facts is... matter. <laughs> yes, they do. Facts but matter. yet you don't want to hear the facts. Like, come on, just... Hurry. Can you read fast at least? No, I, I cannot. <laughs> you suck. So so they end it with basically saying that they're doing all of this for the children. For, for our safety. For the children. So this all goes to a point that I always like to say, which is there is no rule of law, there is only rule of power. Power. And... Uh, whatever loophole legalese that these guys want to do. And, and you can darn well bet that they're going to get sued immediately. And we'll see what the court says. At the end of the freaking day, the real issue of this law is this. Are you going to follow it? Apparently, all these gun stores are going to. They're already taking down their rifles. They're, they're sporter rifles. They're sporting rifles. What would happen if all those... Uh... Stores would say, yeah, you know what? We're just going to keep selling these guns. Well, well, they should. Well, I won't say they should. It's an easy call for me. I'm just saying what would dude. happen. Would everybody be arrested? Would, would, the they shut, would, they, would, they, would, would they take away all their licenses? That's probably what they would do. They would take away their licenses. So I'm still going to sell guns. Come get me. What happens when you have people in complete revolt like that? Well, the, We're ignoring the, gun the, owners, the gun owners have not ignored it. They're, they're complying. Now the question, uh, and they did say, by the way, if you have these guns already, you can keep them. You just can't buy any new ones. Wow, black oh. market. Yeah, dude, wait. you know what? Dude, dude, you know what you and I should do? We should go and just go ahead. No, I'm not. Never mind. Never mind. I, I Don't would never say do that. that. Don't I would say never that. do that. Don't say that on the air. Uh, let, let me Let me give you a scenario which is not me and not you because you and I are decent people and we respect the law. America. America. You you just need to go and buy yourself some ARs and some AKs and SKSs and head on up to Massachusetts land and make yourself a killing because that's what they just uh, did. He didn't say killing. He did. No, he did. monetary killing. Yes. Thank monetary you. killing. Come on. I think everybody knows that. Uh, even the NSA is listening. They're listening to this right now and they're like, dude, we know what he meant. Stop being. Yeah, we Stop know what he being. meant and we're going to twist his words. So, what do you say we go to the next story? Are no, you ready let's... to go to the next story? Or you want to? You have more to say about this? Are you ready to go to the next story? Well, I, I mean, thought you I were know. gonna like you know talk on and on about the same thing. Kinda well, we like could go back to the three stooges because I know you're obsessed <laughs> with them. <laughs> yes, exactly. Are you ready to go to the next story? I am, and I'm not. Okay. Well, well, well this is you know you can keep your black rifles, um, because we know that you didn't know about this law. So, you know, hey, you know, no one was enforcing this law and you were you bought it not knowing that you were breaking the law. That's not really a law because in every other state it's not seen as a law. Uh, But Massachusetts is interpreting that law and its extension. I mean, it's making shit up. That's well, that's the bottom line. It goes back to rule of law, rule of power. Right. 
He he has the power and he's making it up. He's he making up the he, rules and he as he's going. He thinks he has the political will in Massachusetts Correct. that so, he can get away with. But this, this is my concern. Today they're going to say, "Well, you know, you can keep yours. Don't worry about it. We're, we're not going to f- come after anybody." Well, they but will. It, they obviously well, will. That, that's the next step. Of course. The next step is in a year or two they're going to be like, "You know what? You after the next thing that kicks off, they're going to say, "Oh, you know what?" You know, this guy had gotten his before the ban, and um, we need to just collect all of those now. Sooner or later, it's going to get to that. Yes, because they will, they're, they're, they're never satisfied. They always want more. It's, there's a giant hole in their heart. No. Uh, a hole in their heart that they want to fill with power, and it's uh-huh. a hole that can never be filled. Yeah, and the way that you gain more power is you take that power away from others. And by removing people's ability to defend themselves and keeping them scared in perpetuity. In perpetuity, yes. Oh, that was a tough word for me, perpetuity. Yeah, you got it out. It's a, um, yeah. the, the hooked on phonics is working. I'm telling you, you guys got to try it. I tried it on my Dimitri, and it's working. This guy's... He's making strides. Me vocabulary. Yeah. <laughs> better and better. Yeah. Gooder and better and gooder. Gooder and better and gooder. Yes. Yeah. Um, so it's scary. It's scary. How how much is this guy going to get away with? And who's going to shut him down? Certainly not the communists who run that state. Because they're terribly hungry for power. Well, I, I'm going to sw- I am going to go to the next story now. Okay. Because the next story is going to show you that... <laughs> That you can read? No, I'm not reading, actually. I'm oh, you're paraphrasing? The words actually psychically, uh, psychedelically beamed into my mind by the Three Stooges. Boy. Yes. There we go. This is from WFAA. And this is on the other side of, of the world, politically and geographically. A new potential law created by Texas Governor... Greg Abbott would bring stronger patent penalties for crimes against law enforcement officers. It would be called, euphemistically, the Police Protection Act. And it would make any crime committed against any police officer out of bias against police be labeled a hate crime. You want to say something here before I continue? No, please go on. Are you sure? Well, if you pronounce WFAA... In a particular way, it's, it's <laughs> WFA. <laughs> what the... F- no, we're not doing that. Go ahead. Under the act, assaulting a law enforcement officer would become a second-degree felony. It's currently a third-degree felony. Greg, Governor Abbott will try and get the act passed during next year's legislative s- session. And and I'm going to read it in my hope. See, this is not – I'm not trying to sound like Greg Abbott. I'm trying to not sound like the hokey doke derp that all politicians are. At a time when law enforcement officers increasingly come under assault – Simply because of the job that they hold, Texas must send a resolute message that the state will stand by the men and women who serve and protect our communities. By communities, he means the coffers of the coercive enterprise. Is this guy a neocon or a communist? They're, 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 have, you, have you heard of the horseshoe? Yeah. Do, but what, is, do you but, know what the horseshoe yeah, is? Yeah, of course. But what is, What's the horseshoe? Yeah, the, yeah I'm calling the you out. The extreme right and the extreme left are pretty much the same thing. But Okay, like, okay good. They, they need, yeah. Okay. I don't know, man. I don't dude, know. Dude, I'm that's surprised like, that you knew that, that's actually. Like, that's like junior high school stuff. Come I'm on. I'm really surprised he knew that. All right. Seriously, folks. So, wait. There's a guy that's obsessed with now Bigfoot, you... so. Anyway, go ahead with your Greg Abbott story. Is he a communist or is he a neocon? That was the question. Why and did you the have answer to go... was horseshoe. The horseshoe was the, the quick <laughs> answer. A, he's a neocon, isn't he? Oh yeah, yeah. He's the, he's he's a neocon. Absolutely. He's a big big state conservative. Yeah, he's a progressive conservative. Right. Remember, we're all and in, 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 folks. I, I won't go into a long tirade here, but suffice to say, we are in Wilson's hive. Wilson designed this hive back in 1913. He put all the necessary elements in place. With the creation of the uh, federal income tax, the Federal Reserve, and removing the the legislatures from voting on Senate seats. Dude, this is important. Oh, oh you're, you're doing the B thing. Yes. So every single politician that ever talks, whether they're Republicans or Democrats, they're all in Wilson's time. They start with an assumption of progressivism. And this perfectly illustrates it, doesn't it? 
Wait, what'd you say? What was that last part? Do you know, I'm just going to give you a buzzing. random fact about my life. Do you know that I'm a concealed carrier? Congratulations. I, I thought you were going to say I you. always conceal carry. Uh, good. You like, know, I thought. Right now. Are you going to go back to trying to call me hot again? No. Okay, I was just going to point awkward. out that that you shared with me earlier that you turn your underwear inside out. It gives you more life in the, before you have to why? wash it. Yeah, why? Why be that's, cruel I to your you wife? Were... Why be cruel to your wife and make her do so much laundry? I thought, I thought that's what you were going to share because we were just talking about. That Wait, I'm not we ashamed on. of that. No, I, I I'm not ashamed be, at all. You, you do the same thing. You do the same thing. You're the one who gave me the idea, oh, dude. You're the an heck? inside, dude. You're an inside outer. So are you. You gave me you're the idea. Inside outer, folks. I learned the story. I learned this from him. He was so burdened with with uh, one of his wives. Uh, one of my wives. I'm Mormon, by the way. <laughs> right. He's. Well, he's only Mormon in a very small sense of the... He's not a fully practicing Mormon. He only practices in that one aspect of Mormonism. How do you know that? You've told me this, and oh, plus the cameras. Was I drunk at the time? Because I don't remember. Plus the, the surveillance cameras. Oh, cameras. Okay. Before I'm going to co-host a show with anyone, I, I make sure that I, that I... Oh, okay, horseshoe. You want to get back to the horseshoe now? Well, I'd like to get back to the subject. Well, you, <laughs> you, 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 you interjected so the underwear... Oh my gosh! Well, we, I thought we were sharing, <laughs> not underwear. No, dude, not, that was dude. <laughs> again, first, first you say I'm hot, then you want to share my underwear. What the heck, dude? Not that there's anything wrong with that, dude. You got to say that. I think that. I That's can make a, a tent a out of your underwear. Really? I, I don't think it would fit. A very tiny tent. <laughs> very tiny tent. Well, no, actually, never mind. You, I. <laughs> 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 Oh, you win this round, Demetra. You win we, this round. Can you please stay focused? Dude, you introduced the underwear. You know, why don't we get back to the horseshoe and the hive? Horseshoe. Maybe that's the title of this story, the horseshoe Me. and the hive. I'm the special effects dude. I actually think that's the title of this show, Horseshoe and the Hive. What do you think? Dude, rock on. Dude, I'm rocking on with my bad self. So, so go ahead. We're back to the horseshoe. So the dude's a neocon who wants to protect police. It, I, you know, I have a, a fundamental problem with someone who attacks an individual, any individual, any individual who who is now part of a quote-unquote minority, and then the punishment for that person's m murder is different than the punishment for any other person's murder, whether it's a cop or someone who's trans anything or someone who's part of a racial or ethnic minority. Um that's an issue with me. And and this is just an extension of that. How so? We are creating special groups. Special classes. Right. Yeah. And Cast. So, so now the police are and, 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 and I would say the most dangerous group that you'd want to put into a special class are the police. I'm not sure that is the one, I would say politicians. He is talking about passing legislation that will essentially churn doing something against the cop. If if you did it because they were a cop, okay, that's pretty broad. Who gets to define that? If you did it because you were a cop, that, that was gonna, that's going to be called a hate crime, which means that you'll get more stuff added on to you. Dude, more, in the more end, penalties. In the end, it doesn't really matter. If there's a political will... To come after you, to destroy you, they'll use the laws in any way they want to so, do that. So, so you it's can, irrelevant. Law is irrelevant. Power it, it, is it, what's relevant. Absolutely, if you're, but if you're if you're a powerful individual and you punch a cop in the face because the cop was being a douche, chances are not much is going to happen to you. If you're low hanging fruit and you punch a cop in the face, yeah, you're going to have the entire weight of the state coming down on you laws are important to monitor they're important to look at from the standpoint of gauging the balance of power now they, they don't always accurately reflect the balance of power but more often than not they do the balance of power between the governed and the governing in this case greg abbott is betting that he has enough power the governed have enough power to introduce uh, a new tool that'll allow them 
to more efficiently target those that they want to target without significant repercussions from the governed. So when I look at that, I would say, well, Greg Abbott, now, it's not always true because sometimes you pass laws and they and they end up blowing up in your face. So sometimes you reach too far. So I'm not sure whether that's the case here. But I, I look on amongst my conservative friends and I have to see the constant parade of American flags that are now black and white with that little blue stripe. They are worshiping the very people who will be sent out to take away their guns. And if you dare say anything to that effect, what you'll get back from them is, you're a commie, you should leave the country, uh, boys and blue, protect us. They, you get you get hate, you get bile. So if something should go down like Katrina, where the police are going house to house with the National Guard standing behind them, and they say, we want your guns, and you say, you dirty such and such. You little dirty rat. Well, then you're a cop hater. So now... Yeah, you're an anti-American cop hater. Well, no, now you're a cop hater. Now you're... Now, now you're... Are you oh, open it's a for, hate crime. Thank you. Exactly. You're, it's, it, that, this, is, this is exactly my and point. And if, if the cop pushes himself into your house and you shoot him, now it's a hate crime. How about the cop knocks on your door and he's like... I want to come into your house. You know, do you got a warrant? I don't need a warrant. The cop starts pushing you, and you push that cop back. Guess what? It's a hate crime. You pushed him because he's a cop. And 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 how often are you going to say something out of anger? When a cop pushes you, you say something like "you pig" or whatever pejorative you can think of. Now it's a hate crime. So if this law passes in Texas, the police, the 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 problem that we're having in America today is they're passing more and more legislation in which the, 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 the more, there's more re- legislation, there's more regulations, there are more taxes, there are more fines, there are more fees, and it's the cops who are sent out to collect. So they're interacting with us way more than they did before. They're, people are starting to feel the reality that they're not as free as they thought they were. They're getting a bit chafed at it. They're starting to act out. The cops are acting out in return. This, this, this viciousness is just getting more and more amplified. And, of course, the media is helping stir the flames and all the other various groups are helping to stir the flames. And now you want to pass legislation in which you're going to create this untouchable superclass. But you're not going to do a darn thing to change the reality that cops are always going to be sent out for every little thing. That cops are... They're, they're looking for new schemes to catch you breaking that red light. They're looking for new schemes. To, in New York City recently, they have cops that are per- patrolling the neighborhoods, looking through people's trash to catch them violating recycling. And then you're going to pass these hate crime laws. Good luck. Good luck with where that's going. Well, there's going to be more strife. Yeah, it's going to get... It's going to get more vicious. The more that cast sees itself as special and protected, the more it's going to abuse its power, the more people will respond to that power abuse. So I, I, I want to switch gears. I want to switch to the next story here. And this is, a, this is actually this is from a publication that's within the Newswatch volunteer family, of which this show is, is part of that. And this is from the Lehigh Volunteer, Lehigh Valley Volunteer. Dude, you forgot the name? It's the the, the domain name is Lehigh Volunteer. Did you have like a couple beers before we started? No, unfortunately. And I looked in my refrigerator before you got here because usually we have a couple beers afterwards. And here is the one freaking beer. The the studio. We're in the studio right now. Yeah, we're in this high rise building. Yeah, overlooking the the world, and I didn't have my butler. Yeah, uh, get me the beers, dude. Should I call up to your mom? Maybe she can get us. <laughs> that is that's cold, man. Mom, that's yes, cold. Dear. Oh Are my gosh! The, so now you're my mom. Are you in the basement? You think yet? I, I, this is a, such a traumatic episode Are you kids for me? Having fun in the basement? Seriously, 
Uh, now, now you got my dog started. So, listen, you got him barking. <laughs> That's my doggy. Please Thank stop you. that. So you think of this episode, okay? <laughs> you, 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 you tried to hold back from the fact that you think I'm hot. You, you made an offer to share your underwear with me, and now you're pretending to be my mom. What kind of therapy do you think I'm going to need? You're going to need a lot because your interpretation of the events is horribly twisted. It's It's horribly twisted. It's totally accurate. Anybody listening, and if you have a different opinion, you can you can write to us at uh, nssd at stateofwake dot com and let us know. Or you can write Dimitri, Dimitri at stateofwake dot com, or Paul. That's me, Paul at stateofwake dot com. So this article is interesting, and I'm not going to read you all the details of this. I'll give you the real cliff notes for most of this. More reading? Seriously? I wrote this. Can't you play like an audio clip of some dude? Like, Dude, I wrote this. Oh, you wrote this. So shut up. So can't you play us an audio clip of you reading your stuff? What, what would be the difference? <laughs> I don't get that. It'd be more interesting. It'd be more interesting. Okay, it would be more interesting. Just, cause, just so you knew that I pressed a button instead of you had to sit here and watch my lips move. You just don't want to watch my lips move, do you? So this is a a man was dropping off his son at a house where his ex-wife was with another man. And he had a hermit her- crab for his son. There was a conflict. They got into a verbal argument. The, the guy was sitting in his car. And the man wh- whose house he came to, he pulled out a gun and he shot a warning shot into his car tire. Don't know the full details, uh, but in general, I think that you and I will we'll get into this, but we would, in general, don't do warning shots, man. If you're going to pull out your gun, pull it out to shoot. And if you're not ready to shoot, don't pull your damn gun out. Dumbass. So, yeah, exactly. But, but, but be that as it may, the judge said, Judge McFadden, and I want to make sure F.P. Kimberly McFadden, giant Stady Von State face tool said in in in, in the trial this is why people in this country are afraid to move you can't move in this country without someone pulling a gun now all the other msm folks in this area i'm not going to call them out i've done a name. lot of moving and no one's ever pulled a gun on me i've i'm moving right now and no one's pulling a gun on me i think you're kind of thinking about it though kind of entertaining i was thinking of a different kind of movement Wow, I don't. I'm not. I don't want to interpret that, but uh, it could be another thing to add to the to the to the list. therapist list. Yes, yes, of course, exactly. But here you have this judge who's there to basically decide whether this dude broke the law, not to add her two cents about guns. And all of the MSM picked up this quote by her. No one called her out on it. Now, of course, I did. I called her out, and I said exactly what the judge was referring to was not specified. However, gun violence overall has been steadily declining since the 90s, with the overwhelming majority of gun violence occurring in major urban centers like Chicago, New York, and Los Angeles. And then I offered a nice little chart that showed that. But all the MSM all went lockstep with this narrative, which is a demonizing of people with guns. That's that's what this is. It's a demonizing of people with guns. Now, is this going to be challenged? I think that for me, if I'm the lawyer, I'm challenging this because this is a clear bias being shown here. Yeah, but that's assuming the lawyer isn't a progressive too. Who? Well, it's, like, a, it's a public agree. defendant. So, what do you think? Of course, and and can't make too many comments here i've got too many friends and family members who are in law oh really oh dear god oh you come from a law family (sighs) this is is new information for me i'm feeling very uncomfortable right now i actually you should feel very uncomfortable uncomfortable as i feel about the fact that you think i'm hot which is weird uh Uh, i feel more uncomfortable about this (laughs) It's, it's 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 strange. You don't strike me as the coming from a law family kind of guy. Lots of friends and family who are lawyers. And 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 what can you tell me about their political makeup? You know, being very in general. It's it's pretty diverse actually. Um, but they toe the line. Are there are, are there public defenders in that group? Yeah, and they toe 
the line. So they're because they know, yeah, they know, they know that they have a job to do, and they know what the um, overwhelming political leanings of the judici- judiciary, 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 yes. the ju- judiciary. It's it's dictionary and ju- judiciary combined. Yeah. Yes, that's where you look up <laughs> that's judicious where you look up words. Judicious words, yes. exactly. Yeah. And by judicious, we don't mean Jewish. We mean dishes. Oh no, you didn't. Yeah, You're not allowed to say the word the the, the J word in, on on Jew dishes. Yeah, That's racist. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's like you can't say black. Oh, I said it. I'm sorry. You can't say Chinese. Oh, dang it, man! No, you can say Chinese. You can't say Chinaman or chink in your armor, dude. Chink in your armor. Dude. Chink in your, ah, I got a chink in my arm. You know, that would you have got been... got a chink in your armor already. <laughs> you know, that could have been a Groucho Marx, uh, like, uh, last night I woke up with a chink in my armor. I got in there, I'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's inappropriate. It is, totally. It's inappropriate. Dude. I mean, he said he shot an elephant in his pajamas. And what was, was an funny. elephant doing wearing pajamas? That's what he said. Oh. That's the joke. <laughs> I shot an elephant in my pajamas. I got in my pajamas. I'll never know. And then, you know, I changed it. See, I'm clever. You're slow and I'm clever. See, that's cleverness over here. I, I would admit, turning your underwear inside out is very clever. I'm you glad you thought of days, it. You know what? I take it back. You are a little clever yeah. because you came up with that idea and you did it and, and it was, you were successful. And so I followed your lead because I'm a follower. That's what I do. Apparently. I follow. Exactly. I follow. So back to the story. The judge obviously has a bias. Yeah, an um, anti-gun judge. Right, and so she's not really looking at the sky objectively. She's bringing her own, I don't want to say life experience, but her own political affiliations right. she's and not, leanings. She's not deciding on the, the, the letter of the law. Right. She's so, deciding on her feels. Yeah. So there's uh, there's an issue here. And if the if the defense attorney was worth his weight in salt... Probably not. Would. I, I, I didn't. I didn't carry this in my story, but I did see he was quoted uh, numerous sources that said uh, he he said of the defendant that he just made a stupid decision. I don't know. I don't know the circumstances. I bet you that defendant was uh, O.J. Simpson when he had money. Then he it would have been, gotten off. It would have been totally different. But but he is the equivalent of O.J. Simpson without money, and now and he's now in jail. he's in jail. He's in yeah. jail. He's in jail. Yeah. Yeah. Money gets you freedom. And money is power. Power, there is no rule of law. There's only a rule of power. But be that as it may, let's go on to the next story. Because this story, I think we beat into the ground. I think the the, the big focus that I wanted from this story was just that the the anti-gun rhetoric is is so... Pervasive? Pervasive. Good word, yes that judges are now feeling the need to interject anti-gun rhetoric and like good little state media that they are all the local media outlets carried that quote unquestioningly carried that quote i hope my phone doesn't die man so the last story here that we're going to do today the last story that we're going to do here today. He he just showed me something very strange on your phone. It was a picture of uh, actually it was a picture of me in the bathroom. <laughs> you are messed. Really up. wondering how he got that picture. And, you dude, what, what are is up messed with that? up? Did you hire someone to get that? I mean, should I should I have my house security scanned right now? My, my sky rise. You need some professional help. Does this all stem back to the dude in the park? Does that is that where this the like, dude in the park? Yeah. You want you want me to real? I, I think I did tell you a story about the dude in the park. No, that's a. Do you want me to tell you the story of the dude in the that, park? That's a Cosmo Kramer reference when he was arrested for being a serial killer. Oh, and the cop goes I, up I to him. I actually have a dude in the park. Yeah, everybody, story. everybody has a dude in the park story because when the cop goes up to Kramer. He goes, how did you know? He goes, well, before he said, how did you know? He said, uh, you know, there's also the, the cop says to him, we need to talk about the guy in the park. And Kramer goes, how did you know about the guy in the park? So let me get Everybody this out here because my phone's about ready to die. I okay. want to get this said before I lose my phone. Uh, this is a story that I actually wrote in State of Wake, stateofwake.com. 
which little thing that we like to call Newsweek, we like to truthify the news and put a we we scrutinize how the news covers things. And NBC NBC was lamenting the headlines is Congress fails to expand government power, including taking more guns. NBC News laments. So I want to focus on the gun part. NBC News is upset, and they 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 said that. Uh, Perhaps most most upsetting for the state news media outlet was the failure by Congress to encroach even further on restricting the fundamental human nature of self-defense through gun control. They use this term. This is the exact term that they use. Calls by Democrats for modest curbs on gun sales went unheeded. And I'm going to ask you. Do you remember what some of those modest curbs on gun sales included that the Republicans didn't get through? Nope. You don't. You don't remember No Fly, No Buy? No, there's a joke there, but I'm going to let it go. Go ahead. Go no fly, no bly, you know. Oh, no, no bly. bly. Dude, you're such a racist. Go I ahead. know, I, I'm drinking again. I'm back on the sauce. I'm back on... Actually, in this in this case, it's just tomato sauce. No fly, no buy. No fly. If you're on the no fly list, you don't get to buy guns. Remember that? Okay. Jace. That is the modest reform that they're referring... That's one of the modest reforms. Jace. Referring and how to. many people are on this no fly list? Like two million? <sighs> no. Something? Is it really? No, it well, can't no. Be. The, there's the no fly list, and then there is the other. It, it's it's not just no fly, no bly. By is if I say bly, you know what? I'm just going to stick with it. No fly, no. It's now no fly. It's no fly, no bly. It's now no fly, no bly. It's now no fly, no bly, man. No fly, no bly. This, whether you're on the no fly list or the terror watch list, the no fly list is a few, uh, a few thousand. I don't remember the exact number, but the terror watch list is like a couple million. And so the Democrats were pushing for legislation to prevent people from this. This is the modest reform to curb gun sales. This the is part of the only it. problem I have with those two things is that <clears throat> only is that there's no real um, what's the word I'm looking for? Accountability? That's a good one. Yeah. There's no accountability for these lists. It's administrators saying, hey, you know what? That guy's kind of creepy. We'll it's called a star chamber. Oh, who that? Star chamber is something that, well, it was uh, it was widely... Sounds so nice. A star chamber. Yes, yeah, a star chamber. Oh, that's lovely. So it was used in, in England during the Reformation. It was used in other places, but where it was, I think, where the phrase really took hold... It was during the Reformation, they had these star chambers to determine whether or not you should be licensed to operate and distribute the contents from a printing press. Because a printing press was the assault rifle of the 1500s. So they had these star chambers that got together and they put people on lists and decided who's on, who's off, who gets to have a license, who doesn't have, get to have a license. There was no accountability. That's a, that, that's your start. That, that's where it originally came from. Then it's come to mean basically any type of secret meeting that decides the fate of someone, especially in a legal sense. And that's essentially what they're going to do, what, what they wanted to do here. That was the modest reform, and that is the language that NBC used. And this is an article that was presenting itself as straight news. Pushing. There is no straight news. No, no, there isn't. And and I'm not saying that you can ever be a hundred percent straight news, but certainly you can you can you can definitely interject a whole lot less uh, political editorializing than you do. And the way that they do it, they do it subtly. They don't they don't say, in my opinion, this. It's <clears throat> they, they use. I mean, it, I I run a couple. I run a newspaper. And uh, well, another one, and I've I've been in the news business for a while, and I've never used in any place that I've run. I've never used the AP style, and I'll never use the AP style because the AP style is loaded with political garbage. <coughs> it's not about 
And I understand when you're in the news, you, you, you come to, to if you have a whole bunch of people writing for your site, you want to have certain uniformity about you. Like if you're going to say the time, AM, PM, how are you going to list it? These are a lot of things that AP Style covers. But AP Style also covers things like you can't call them illegal aliens. So the AP Style is you never refer to them as illegal aliens. You call beep, them. Beep, 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 This is important information. I'm dropping knowledge on you, man. I'm, beep, 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 I'm lifting you up. I'm lifting you out of the, the, the ghetto of, of non-awareness is what I'm doing. That's racist. <laughs> You're choking I, on your words, I see. I, my, my throat is suddenly drying out on me, and this is why I, I'm you, glad I got the water. You know why? Because you guilt. talk too much. It's guilt. We need, we need special effects, dude. And we need commercials. We're going to have all that. We, we will have because an with those things, we'll have commercials, uh, dude, we'll have that's all that gonna stuff. Be, that's going to be hot. Not you. I, I'm thinking that's that going to be hot. I'm thinking that he's, uh, in his mind, he's saying that's in his head. He's in his, well, out loud, he's saying that's, and in his mind, he's saying Paul. Yeah. It's very inappropriate. Are you homophobic? I, no, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm very, I, I'm just. You're very you uncomfortable know, all of a sudden. It's weird when your friend okay. thinks you're hot. Dude. Uh, it's right. just weird, you know. What happened in the park with that dude? Come on. Do you want to know the story? Because yeah. we're going through the last story, we're kind of at the end of the show. Here. Because I think that'll illuminate. It's a good way to end the show? No, it's probably a horrible way to end the show, but. <laughs> okay. I think you, the audience deserves an explanation. So I was about nine or ten years old. It's always around that age, yeah. Usually, yep. And I went to a an amusement park, and I was there. My mom took me. And I, I wasn't there with any other kids. I didn't know anybody there, so I was also all alone. And I was just wandering through the park, and this kid befriended me. And he's like, dude, what's up? I'll, I'll take care of things. I'll help you out. And we're right on the rides, having a good time. I really like this dude. He's like maybe a year or two older, a couple years older than me, taller than me, definitely a couple years older than me. Of course, of course he's definitely like a couple of years older than me. And I was already I was short for my age, so there was a big size difference. And I'm having a great time with him. And he says, dude, I want to go show you something. Come back. Come back back here. It's always that, isn't it? And uh, then he proceeded to Rochambeau me. He cocked back his leg and he kicked me in the nuts as hard as he could. And I dropped like a stone. And my mom happened to be coming around the corner right at that moment in time. And Rochambeau? What, what the hell does that mean? You, you know, you have. A uh, Rochambeau, you know, you get a contest like kick each other in the balls. So oh, go on. And get that's things. news to me. I never knew. That yeah, you don't watch South Park. It's South Park a had a whole thing on it. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. But but that's my my park story. You know, I was, and, and you know, it's kind of like the government. You know, the government. You know, they'll they'll take care of you. They'll give you a free, quote unquote, free education and health care. And and when the moment comes, they're gonna say, "Dude, come back here. I got the better stuff for you." And then they're going to kick you in the balls. And you just better hope your mom comes by at that moment in time. Because if she does it, I don't know what else that kid would have done. Good reason to conceal carry. Although I was only 9 or 10, so wouldn't have helped me back then. So there you go. Do you feel good now? Do you feel better about yourself now that you've gotten this traumatizing story out of me? Now that you've wounded me in front of the millions and millions of fans that are listening. Did you soil your shorts that day? And did you have to turn them no, inside I, out? I, I, is I that where this I starts? I did not soil my shorts. Is that where I this starts? I did not do that. That is mm. actually, uh, no, it started uh, actually three months ago when you when you suggested, you like, dude, I've been doing this thing. And you showed me this video, <laughs> very disturbing video. It's on YouTube. It's Look on it up. YouTube. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's all on YouTube. On <laughs> it's all on YouTube, Dude, man. I bet you if you looked it up, there's there somebody is somebody on YouTube. Somebody's out there making the case. You know, people laugh about this, but you know, there's, there's some truth you can, to what they say. Hey, man, you can save the world because you're going to not use soap and water. And yeah, you, yeah. You can conserve. Oh, that's, that's, see, I was thinking about like giving conserve, my wife a break. Man. And by the way, I am not a sexist. Water, man. I, you I need am, to conserve it. I am more than willing conserve to do laundry. The water. But my wife won't let me near. Don't use near. soap. Soap is the devil. <laughs> yes, yes. Soap Don't. is Illuminati. 
If you use soap, you're part of the Illuminati. The chemistry ind industry runs the world. The, the chemicals you rub on your body, they dictate who you become. That's why I wash my body, body entirely with wheat. With dry wheat, I rub I dry sand. wheat all over my body. Sand is better, dude. Sand is more sand. hygienic. Fine sand. Yes. Fine sand. And you're not killing a plant. Plants, and then you plants are people, too. Bake the sand. Plant lives matter. You can bake the sand and then use it warm. How are you going to bake the sand, though? You bake it in the oven. Well, what 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 do you use to heat that oven? What do you you solar, you dirty solar little <laughs> seriously? Is too long. You dirty little dude. I got into the capitalist zone. pig, man. Dude, I got into this zone. I I was becoming a progressive. You were becoming that guy. I was. Oh my god! Like a part of you I was, was starting like to in the back it. of your mind. A part of you was like. Where can I get sand? Hey, maybe this the chemistry industry is controlling our minds yeah. with soap. Yeah, exactly. What is in the soap anyway? I think And cologne? Air fresheners? <gasps> Dude, I'm onto something. Nanobots. They put nanobots in all that stuff. Nanobots get in your mind. And you rub it all over your body. Yeah. You rub it all body over wash. your body. Body wash. Yeah. Shampoo. Yeah. I got <gasps> Irish Spring body wash upstairs. Dude. Dude, I'm layered with nanobots. Conditioner. Oh, you use conditioner? Conditioner. Your, wait, do you use conditioner on your hair? Only my pubes. It softens them up. Oh, good. It straightens it. I don't like how they curl sometimes. Oh. Why are you turning red? I'm feeling I'm feeling very weak at the moment. <laughs> so I'm so much for the inaugural. Show's yours. Yeah, so Show's much. yours. <laughs> Is your throat drying again? No, it's it's my mind is drying actually. <laughs> <laughs> so did we did do I think we touched did, on all the key points here. We did. We we turning we pubes, underwear, underwear inside out. Hotness. Well, you Dude, only hotness, really brought which hotness is a up. Weird. I don't know where that came from. Yeah. Being assaulted in the park by some older kid. Yeah, yes. being being Rochambeau and, did and we, Dimitri not knowing what Rochambeau was. That's very Did important. we do a public service today? I don't care. Is I, this your is this your outlet to express your inner angst? This is I I'm actually this is just part of the Illuminati plan. I'm just I mean, you know the cool thing is when you're part of the Illuminati and then you say that you're part of the Illuminati and people assume that you're joking. But it distracts really, from it, yeah. It distracts you. They'll never believe that you're part of the Illuminati. Of course, well, you, I'm not part of the Illuminati. but You were part of the Illuminati. I am part of the Nephilim. Next. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Bigfoot Nephilim. Of course. Dude, down <laughs> in Georgia. Nephilim it, Claw. No, in the Carolinas, they have Bigfoot with horns. Nephilim. Yeah. They, they call him the Goat Man. Really? Did you meet him? Did, does he smell? He smells like goat. <laughs> does expect? he wash? No, no. Does not, he use not soap? A, not, does he use? Does he turn his underwear inside and out? I think he does. Well, that, based see, on the smell, I would have to assume yes. Dude, you, the, the smell is—it doesn't bother you after a while. You get used to it. Okay. Can okay. we conclude? this? I think now? we can Cause, wrap this up. Yeah, because so, this is going in dark so we, places. So we, we, what we've touched upon is. Are you going to recap? I'm going to recap. Is that okay? Am I allowed to recap? Wow. Is it okay if I recap? Would you prefer that I do not recap? Are you are you anti an, anti recap? Yes, I am. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah, so I see that. So up yours. We're, we're gonna. <laughs> so we're, we're gonna have a conflict here. We are. Yes. I, you're gonna have to go fetal and just deal with it. I'm so, gonna have to let it so, stogie soon. That's that's. Dude, dude, I'm gonna have to make a beer run. But you hear I, that? Uh, have to make a beer run. You hear that? That's that's a nice. Uh, Smell it. Can you smell? Can you guys smell? It? If anybody can smell Cigar. it, by the way, please let me know. I will be thoroughly impressed. I will taste it shortly. So you're going to taste that phallic symbol and just just lock you on that. You are messed just, up. You can't just enjoy what it just is. Lock on that. Sometimes or... a cigar is just a cigar. No, who it, said that? Is it? Who said that? I don't know who said that. Freud. How oh, do you know oh, Freud? Freud, Freud. I, 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 I said, I, well, I've heard of him. what do you think, don't, Dr. Freud? Don't you think a cigar is very phallic? Yeah, Lucian Sometimes Freud? Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. So that, you mean Lucian Freud or Sigmund? Sigmund, of course. Yes. Well, that's, 
Don't ever do that voice again. Why not? Oh, God. It is my, oh. it is my Eastern, well, like, Austrian voice of, like, an old Austrian Nazi. So I'm going to I'm gonna move into the recap now. So we touched on, Ooh, we I'm have trying a... trying to block the recap. <laughs> I'm blocking Wait. it. Wait, now I'm we turning a... Indian. I'm so sorry. I'm <laughs> you in can't some hold it. You Austrian. can't hold it. It lapses. It does. Dude, you're racist. So you got... You got a Democrat-led government in Massachusetts going after guns. And by Democrat, he means progressive Marxist? Yeah. You got a Republican-led government in Texas. And by Republican, he means progressive neocon? Progressive neocon, semi-Marxist, sort of. Zip, 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 yep, yep, in the the hive. Uh, Trying to create a special class for cops, giving them even more power over us, which which is convenient because those are the guys that are going to go out and take our guns from us if and when the government decides to do that. Did the brown shirts have special privileges? Yeah, there were special gun ownership privileges. For were, brown shirts? Yeah. Okay, yeah. just wondering. Just throwing that out there, you know, just, just throwing that out there. Just wondering. Hey. Hey, if you were alive in nineteen, if 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 Greg Abbott was 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 the governor of of whatever in Germany in nineteen thirty six, he'd be talking about the thin brown line, <laughs> which kind of takes us back to the underwear. But <laughs> <laughs> so he was talking about the thin brown line, the thin brown line, and we had two instances stories that show how the media goes along with the state narrative in which in which. You know, the first instance uh, where the judge is interjecting her political opinion into a case that bore no relevance to her p- political opinion. And all the media went lockstep and carried this this unchallenged quote. And then you had M- NBC referring to no fly, no buy as modest gun sales reforms. So, folks, I think the bottom line here that you can get from this. And and we're going to have other shows where we're going to actually hear, like, cool stuff. This is kind of a bummer beginning, really. But we're going to have victories. We're going to talk about how guns have won the day. So The takeaway from this is we live in a world where it's always up to us the power that we give to them. The state is a myth. It's only real in the minds of people that give it power. When When those... When those shop owners decide in Massachusetts, like Dimitri said, we're going to sell them anyway. You take away our licenses, we're still going to sell guns anyway. The state will, the, the myth of the state, the coercive enterprise, won't have a response to that type of power. But when they, when they capitulate, when they give in, that's the only the real power that they have. And I think we can end it here. You have any last closing remarks? I do. My dot do- my dog's breath smells like dog food. That's true. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my uh, dog's breath smells. Well, never mind. I can't say that on air. It, it smells like a certain part of someone's anatomy that I know that's on this show right now. Now, yeah. Does I, he lick himself there? No, I. He that's, he licks. Yeah. Yes, dude. Well, I think that's I'm what just he does. Commenting on my dog's breath. Why do you have to make this gay? All of I don't know what you're talking you're just, about. Like, everything I don't know you. what you're talking about. I'm talking like about my dog's breath smells like your arm. I mean, what the heck are you thinking? You're so foul and vulgar. Mm. Right? Unbelievable. Dude, I take exception. Unbelievable. To the foul. places that you took. Vulgar. Back. Yes. Foul. No. You've, foul is just a step too far. <laughs> well, foul is just a step too vulgar, far. Vulgar. I would accept. Okay. So on that note, we are going to do this show next week, and hopefully I will have some more bells and whistles ready, ready by then, and Dimitri won't tap on the freaking microphone because bad audio is a hate crime. And I, I didn't say this at the beginning of the show. I'll say this at the end of the show. This show is covered by a BIPCOT no-gov license. That means that you are free to reuse this show any way, shape, or form that you so choose, so long as you don't work for or advocate for the government more information, go to bipcot.org. You didn't even get the Simpsons reference. I'm but, sorry. 
what Simpsons. We have to go back to this. Is, is it a terrible thing that I didn't get a Simpsons? You, did. you didn't get Lisa a South Park Simpson, reference? Lisa Simpson. And you're going to call me out on not getting a is Simpsons reference? talking to the cop's son. What was his name? I can't remember. And she said something prof- Is Nelson the cop's son? No, no. And she said something profound. <laughs> no, not that guy. She she says something profound. And he goes, Ralph Wiggum. Yes, Ralph Wiggum. Yeah. And he goes, My cat's breath smells like cat food. I didn't get that reference. Yeah, because you you were making a profound statement and I said, My dog's breath smells well, like cat food. Well that's probably what it was. I was in a, you know, thinking and thoughtful mode yeah. and then And then you had to take it to licking anatomy. Your to- arm. Your arm. That's you it. Are messed I up. Don't, uh, what's so bad about what your arm? That dude did to you by kicking you in the nards. Man, he did kick me in 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 the in goonies. the nards. He kicked me in the goonies. It was uh, difficult. It was traumatizing. <laughs> it, uh, well, wow! Just out of the blue. Just uh, he was going to rob your ass. You know that, right? Is that what he was going to do? Is that all he was going to do? Yeah. Who knows? But. He set me up for a long time, and then... Did you ever find him? Did you ever shank him? I was nine or ten. I... Dude, at nine or ten, I had pss, I had marks on my bed, like notches cut out. You had notches on your bed? Cut, yep. You, you, you cut notches on your bed? Yeah, my BB gun was All the time deadly. you wanted marbles? Every time you wanted marbles, you'd done a notch? My BB gun. Hardcore. Hardcore. Winter mar- marbles. What's the big marble called? I can't remember what that's called. There was a cat's eye. There was all sorts of stuff. Knocker or whatever the heck is. I think the show is over, folks. Oh, it was over. It was over a long time ago. We're just rambling on. I am looking at the cigar, and it's waiting to be smoked. It is tapping the microphone. (laughs) By the way, your microphone smells funny. It smells like microphone. Yeah, what what is that? It's microphone. Good old fashioned microphone. I grew Why them, haven't you I grew ended the show already? Myself. Dude, this is horrible. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and end the show. This is About Paul time. Gordon, Jeez, and uh, I'm here with the annoying, uh, probably the last show that he's going to be on. Uh, oh, my God. Thank God. It worked. <laughs> it worked. Finally. Yeah. And Cut you, loose. And you have been listening to New Shooting Self Defense and SSD. We'll see you next week. Well, We'll see who we'll see next week. We might see Dimitri next special week. Special guest. Because <laughs> I got some guys who'd like to talk to you. I bet you do. I yeah. bet you do. And uh, we'll see you next week. Adios. Amigos. Good night. And we haven't come up with a clever call-off sign. We'll work on that. We'll work on our slogans and all that stuff and get stuff down. Good night, everybody. Hasta luego.